Welcome back to California Cooking. Fall is my absolute favorite season and today's menu will leave you feeling full, happy, and cozy. Speaking of cozy, Chef Jason Neroni knows how to make you feel right at home. He's a veteran in the culinary world and one of the most popular chefs here in LA. We sat down to talk about his new restaurant, Best Bet, and he showed me how to make a few quick and easy fall recipes. Jason. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. Good. Yeah. Born in Orange County. Born in Orange County. Started cooking in Orange County. Yeah. I worked at uh, this lovely place called Club 33 at Disneyland. Oh my I've God. actually been carrying this for almost 30 years. No, you haven't. I, I it's have, a, back, a book of matches. Just a very exclusive book of matches you don't see very often. Uh, formative years. Started there when I was 17 years old. So getting a job there, did that spark your love of food and wanting to be a chef one day? It did. I wanted to, to be an artist, like I wanted to yeah. draw. I, I still am a painter to this day, but I really wanted to focus on that. But I think I saw the ability to see the art in culinary art. And somebody kind of took me under their wing and was like, you know, you're really good at this. You should really think about it. And I was like, ah, I don't know. And then I really excelled and I was young and um, I got introduced to some really cool things here. There were some really great chefs, really great pastry chefs that really took me under their wing. And to see the attention to detail and the art form was really uh, an opening of my eyes. Rose, which is where we are now, your restaurant, but this actual spot has been here since the 70s? 1979. It has always been this cornerstone of Venice, uh, uh -huh. meeting place, town circle, coffee. It's everything at the Rose. It's, you can have a, a beautiful dinner. Yeah. I've seen people get married here. Really? The Emmys here with CAA. We have done the Lakers. You can name yeah. it. The Rose does it. Your new spot. Yes. Tell us. Uh, I have a new restaurant. It's called Best Bet. Best Bet is in uh, the A-frame on Washington that's been there since the 1960s. It was originally an IHOP, one of the cool. original IHOPs. I think you have an affinity for buildings that have history then. Well, or is it just coincidental? It is what the old saying goes in the restaurant business, right? Location, location, yes. location. I say all the time, I don't just sell food. Yeah. I sell experiences. And so when you walk in, it can't just be about the plate in front of you. It's about the seat, the table. The ambiance. I think I look at it all. I look yeah. at I look at everything. And so does so does the diner. Correct. Right? We, you kind of when you come into a place, you're the music, the just everything plays into the Absolutely. experience. Absolutely. Would you say a pizza joint or modern Italian? Uh, how would you? That's the the the, the wink and the nod. Yeah. It is a it, it, we do serve pizza three okay. three kinds. Okay. Um, but it is a restaurant uh, full full and foremost. I really wanted to take the attention to detail that I've learned over the years and put it into a pizza. Okay. So it's kind of like twofold, right? It, it's lowbrow, highbrow, but I can make you the best pizza. I'm I want to be one of the best pizza makers in the world. I mean, pizza is great and everybody has their opinion, but I uh -huh. wanted to give everything I could into to these that you normally wouldn't see. We have a rotisserie there. We have uh, rotisserie ducks. We have whole roasted fish, all hand rolled pastas. The farmer's market produce, which I go to every single day is all hand every selected. Day. Every day. What are we going to make today? It is fall. Today we're gonna do two dishes. Okay. We have kind of like a warm potato salad. Yes. Uh, and I was thinking about this for like, maybe like a nouveau version for the Thanksgiving table. Maple syrup, bacon, balsamic. Okay. Simple, it, it sounds complicated, but honestly it's no more than five or six yeah. ingredients. The next one I thought about football. Okay. Uh, everybody has like nachos, everybody has like that cheese dip. I eat a lot of uh, Korean restaurants in Koreatown, yeah. Korean barbecue, it's called corn cheese. It's basically like melted mozzarella with a little bit of mayonnaise, with some corn. A Korean uh, nacho cheese. You had me at cheese and mayo. Okay, what are we doing first? Let's do the corn cheese first. Okay. No more than seven ingredients. Okay. You're gonna take uh, a little bit of butter. I'm gonna melt this for a second. Okay. If you have a saute pan at home, just uh, a little bit of saute pan, very easy. We would have our nice warm butter, and then we're gonna take some of this mozz, take your corn, a little bit of uh, pickled jalapenos. It's not spicy at all. Yeah. And remove the seeds. Right. A little bit of uh, Parmesan, salt, that's it. And we, now we wait. In the meantime though, we can do this. Okay, sure, let's do that. This is a uh, pizza dough or flatbread dough. You leave it uh, out to proof, get it nice and warm so you can just push it nice and, nice and softly okay. through. I'm gonna cook it on the grill. If you have a grill at home, you can just turn on your backyard grill for five minutes, get it nice and hot. This is literally, literally gonna cook in about two minutes. Okay, it pop. Beautiful. And if you don't have a grill at home, just put it in your oven. What I like to tell my people all the time, let it sit. Don't move don't it, don't touch mess it. mess with it. Don't mess with it, leave it there. It's ready? Yes. Look at that. When it comes off, let it cool for just a half second. 
but then you don't want to wait too long. A little bit of olive oil makes it nice. You always want to put salt really in the early beginning because it absorbs into it. There's the chili powder on there, not too spicy. Are your hands like oven mitts? Uh, I don't feel pain. Yeah. What are you talking about? I like to garnish just a little bit when it comes out. Wow. You want to zhuzh it up just a touch. Yeah. A little chili just to make it look tight. There you go. And then we're going to put a little bit of the mayo like we talked about. Just a little. And you give it a little. Oh, come on. Look See that? at that. That's ridiculous. That's the best homemade queso I've seen. Can you take your bread? Get a little right down the oh middle. Gosh, you're watching the game and you pull this out. Come on. I mean, you're you're winning. And that is pretty much it. Look, that is just. Mm. Shishitos, Japanese sweet potatoes, yeah. smoked bacon, butter, herbs, maple syrup, balsamic, right? At home, you would have an oven set at 450 degrees. Yeah. Put everything in a saute pan, get it nice and hot. Okay. Potatoes already pre. So these you would pre boil. Okay. Salted water, a little bit of garlic, bay leaf is always, I like to add up. Maybe a little black pepper, yeah. gives it a punch. Don't need to peel that. Um, it's good to uh, put them cut side down. Okay. Gives a nice little caramelization. We're gonna let that saute for just a half second. Okay. Get a nice little color to get it going. And now that I have that, okay. I have some pre cooked bacon that's nice and crispy that'll help push it along. Nice. And then we're gonna put some of this nice peppers in there. If you're not comfortable with big peppers, just break them. Okay. They're not spicy. Put that in your, in your oven, five, seven minutes, depending on your doneness you want for peppers. I like mine slightly charred, but I don't want to mush, so we'll just keep an eye. The potatoes are already cooked, so you don't have to really overly worry about that. The only thing you really want is uh, some caramelization okay. to help with uh, the flavor accents. Nice and roasted, look at that. Yes! Not too much. Look at the brown bits on the potato Amazing. and the peppers. Oh my, oh, look at that, come on. We're gonna put a little bit of the, the magic right there. What I have here is maple syrup. Okay. And uh, we're gonna mm. pour that right over the top. It smells so good. Pepper. Vinegar coming in hot for you. Oh, this is gonna make it over the top. Here we go. And give it a nice little shake. I really love what's happening. We're here. gonna make it fancy. Ready? One, <laughs> two, three. Last but not least, this is uh, just some whole yogurt, not low fat, but just whole yogurt, which is better for you. We make a nice little well. Mm -hmm. Make it look like it fell from the sky. Yeah. That's how that's how us fancy chefs do this. Always a little olive oil for me. Makes it a little bit sexier. That's really just it. This on record might be the fastest potato side dish I've ever witnessed. Really? Yeah, it hits everything. It hits it all. Pretty fire. Really good. Thank Jason, you so this much. Is so much fun. And by the way, everything coming out of your kitchen, I want to eat. Everything looks better than the next. It's Thank unreal. You. Mm. Coming up, my love for fall continues. I'm adding pumpkin to my pasta carbonara. Then another one of my favorite flavors of the season, Levi and I are making homemade apple donuts. fall twist to a beloved Italian classic. Here's my creamy pumpkin bacon carbonara pasta. It is pumpkin season and really it's one of those things where you try to think how can I work in pumpkin or pumpkin puree maybe into dishes that I normally would make and I, I kind of was thinking about different kinds of pasta or something quick you could throw together on a weeknight. And the idea of a carbonara, which is basically you mix an egg and bacon into your spaghetti to create a carbonara. And I thought that would be an easy thing to work in some pumpkin puree. So I'm gonna do a pumpkin carbonara for dinner. In this bowl, I'm going to uh, add an egg because carbonara has egg in it. So one egg and then one egg yolk. So we're gonna put the white in this dish. I think the hardest part about a carbonara is you just don't wanna scramble your eggs when you add the hot pasta to it. So that is the one tricky part. So we got our egg, a lot of really good Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna add our pumpkin puree. I'm gonna do the whole can because I'd rather have too much sauce than not enough. 
And then, because nutmeg and pumpkin just work so beautifully together, a hefty pinch of nutmeg, quarter teaspoon, lots of freshly cracked black pepper. And then, I'm gonna mix that together. Some salt. But you are gonna have the bacon, and the Parmesan is salty, but you're still gonna need some salt because the pumpkin puree. A nice pinch of salt. So we've got our sauce, a good amount of our sauce, basically, because we're gonna add some pasta water to this. Now, we're gonna cook up the bacon, and to the bacon at some point, I'm gonna add some shallot and some garlic. So I'm gonna chop that up. A big component of carbonara is either pancetta or bacon, and I'm using bacon. I've got a cold pan. A lot of times I cook the bacon in the oven, but I'm going to need a little bit of the fat in the pan to cook our garlic and our onion. As many slices as you can fit in a single layer. Now pan on, we'll cook that. And this pan right here, this might be an unconventional idea, but I think I wanna to top it with some toasted pumpkin seeds. So it's kind of an unconventional idea. It's not typically on your carbonara, but because there's pumpkin in the sauce, I thought maybe to add a little bit of crunch on top. Okay, pumpkin seeds happen fast. Pumpkin seeds done. Pan back on the burner, and now I'm gonna melt some butter. And into our brown butter, which is kind of nice, sage leaves. And I just wanna crisp these up, fry up some sage leaves to top our pasta, because sage and pumpkin and bacon are just best friends. And I might even top our sage just a little bit of salt. Water is boiling, and then a fat pinch of salt to our pasta. In goes some spaghetti. Now let me see what's happening over here. Oh boy, bacon out. I'm gonna drain some of the oil because we don't need all of that oil. So I'm gonna just drain it into a bowl. Leave a little behind. And I'm gonna add in our shallots and garlic. Just wanna scrape up all of the bits on the bottom. All right, garlic and onion done. And now we chop up the bacon while we wait for our pasta. Our spaghetti's done, so this is a big thing for carbonara. You need the pasta water. This is how you get the sauce. So I'm just gonna take a bunch of pasta water, turn it off, and then you go right into the pan. So I'm gonna put it on a low heat, and then your spaghetti goes right in. No draining necessary. You want the water, so you add the pasta into the garlic and the shallot. You wanna pick up all the brown bits. And this is where I get nervous, because this is where you don't want to scramble the eggs that's in the mixture. Okay, so we got this. I'm gonna add in a little of our starchy water. This helps create a sauce. And then this goes in, and you just want to stir. Don't get nervous, just, <laughs> just stir. And see how the pasta water helps create this sauce. Time to top our pasta. So the first, you could serve it out of the skillet, but I'm gonna just try. Transfer into a big bowl, and you wanna get all of the good stuff. To our pumpkin carbonara. Some toasted pumpkin seeds for a little crunch. A big, heaping tablespoon or two of Parmesan cheese. Look at these crispy sage leaves that we had toasted up in butter and then some nice freshly cracked black pepper, and dinner served. I'm just gonna, since I'm alone here, I'm just gonna sneak a little taste. It's just all the, the notes that you wanna hit this time of year with the pumpkin and the sage. It's cozy, comfort food. Mm. Coming up, Levi and I are having a lot of fun in the kitchen making homemade apple donuts with cinnamon sugar. That's coming up next.
This next recipe will make the house smell so good, the flavors of apples and cinnamon make these donuts irresistible. Levi, this is my favorite time of year. You know why? Why? Because I love when things start to turn into fall flavors like pumpkin and apple and cinnamon and all those cozy flavors. So today, and because Halloween's my favorite holiday. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna make an apple donut. Doesn't that sound good? And cinnamon, sugar so on top. Means, so if you get it out good, we need to spray this. So you, yeah, so we bought this cute little donut form tin um, and we're gonna bake them instead of fry them. And I'm all for frying, but this will be less messy and I think easier. So you can spray our donut form. And while you do that, I'm gonna get working on our dough, if you will. So first, the dry. Two cups of flour. And I almost, you know, wanted like an apple fritter type thing, but I think ultimately a baked donut might be easier to pull off because I'm no donut maker. I've actually never made a donut, so. Let's do some baking powder and baking soda. Two teaspoons baking powder. Wait, Two. can I, can I dump yeah. please? So level it off, remember? And then do one of the baking soda. Let's do some of our spices. I want this to be really kind of spicy. But donuts aren't supposed to be spicy. No, I, I mean spicy not in the like chili sense, like pumpkin pie spice, which I'm just, this is from last year. And I put bye a bye. big fat tablespoon in there. I wanna put in some ground cardamom. I love cardamom. Cinnamon, here we go. It's okay to add extra cinnamon. Some salt, quarter teaspoon of oh, salt. Yeah. I'll just salt, put like a pinch uh, in there. Onto our wet ingredients. So we're gonna set this aside. Okay. We've got some what? butter, half a cup of applesauce. Half a cup. We've got some buttermilk here. Three quarters of a cup. Vanilla. Wet goes into dry. So will you do the honors and? Oh, I thought we were gonna dump that in. Yep. Okay, let me whisk it. Now you get all of that mixed together. We're gonna do a quarter Wait, cup. No, we need a lot of sugar because donuts are, are very sugary. Yes, brown sugar and white sugar. Oh yeah, we added a bunch more spice and I like it better. Now I also found some ground ginger. Can you put a little bit more vanilla? Yeah, add more vanilla. And I'm gonna add more cinnamon okay. too. I'm it's going I'm nuts. as careful as a key. Okay. Okay, that's good. <laughs> These are gonna be the most flavorful <laughs> apple cinnamon donuts. <laughs> oh, you know what else? <laughs> nutmeg, a little more nutmeg. I need this to wash it down. I feel like now we're getting somewhere. So I added a little more milk and basically, you, you, you want a consistency because we're gonna pipe it out of a piping bag into our mold. I wanna add fresh Did apple. Hold it? Right now I'm just gonna cut it into little bite-sized pieces. Let's add our apples into our batter. So then you'll get a little bit of fresh apple in your apple donut. So what I would do when you make this is you just keep checking. Depending on how spicy, some people don't like too much ginger, too much nutmeg. I like a lot, so I say go for it. How is it with the fresh apple? Good. Good, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Pastry bag for you. Hold it down. Okay, hold it. This is my bag. Yep. And I'm gonna fill your bag. And we cut the end. Correct. And if you don't have these pastry bags, a Ziploc will do. So here's what you do. You go like this, and then you take it, and you squeeze. And now we cut. And you just go around and you make cute donuts. Oh, this is fun. I kind of like this situation. <laughs> In the oven. The oven is set at 400. Hot donuts. Look at how they puffed up. We do the stick test. Came out clean. We may have overfilled them just a tad. That one is massive. Oh that my gosh. That one's mine. That one's mine. That one's mine. Look at these. They almost turned into baby bunts because we overfilled them, but still cute and delicious. We are not done yet. With any proper donut, 
They have either icing, a glaze would be delicious, or what if we roll them in cinnamon and sugar? In this bowl, in this bowl I have melted butter. And in this bowl. Wait, could I, could I put it in? Sugar, yep. Okay, that's plenty of sugar. A lot of cinnamon. This is like your cinnamon toast in the morning. We're gonna mix, we mix. Yep, we mix that up. I'm gonna just a pinch of salt in there. Here's what we do. We take our donut, quickly roll it in the butter, and then in the sugar. You ready? Let's do it. That's good. Okay. Do you wanna just quickly taste? Because I can't, honestly, I can't wait. You ready? Mm. Oh, good. Good. Not too sweet. But the apple, the apple, you still get a little bit of a crunch. And you can use the rest of the sugar and just dip it. I like that. Okay, those donuts were a hit with Levi, but what about little bro? Let's see if Theo liked them. Your brother made those. He wants to give you a kiss. Aww. That's pretty cute, you guys. <laughs> His first homemade donut. Aw, <laughs> uh, see, everybody loves a donut. For all the recipes, including my homemade apple donuts, follow us on Instagram. Well, that does it for us. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Let me do it. Yeah. Why is that? That's really... <laughs> a lot of grandmas could do that. Um, could I? Not me. But let me do it. Could I do so it? So you just go around. But soon you're going to be a grandma in a few years, so then you could do it. <laughs>